rocket engines. A lot of fire and noise, or nothing at all. In space, you, you don't have the ground to push on, for example, nor do you have air. If there was a ground, you could use legs or wheels, and we don't have air to push through with propellers. Uh, that pretty much leaves teleportation and rockets. And I don't know much about teleportation, so it's rocket time. There are many different types of rockets, or if we're using a more general term, propulsion systems. Today we're going to talk just about uh, what we'll call chemical propulsion systems, where there is a chemical reaction used to go really fast. So that's fun. There are many types of propulsion systems we could get into, but today we're going to talk about three common ones, being liquid rockets, solid rockets, and hybrid rockets. Liquid rocket engines, pretty common, especially for launch vehicles, which we've talked about before. Liquid rocket engines are really powerful. They're really efficient. They get the job done really well, most jobs at least. And what you need for a liquid, we call it a liquid bipropellant engine because there's two propellants that go into it, a, an oxidizer and a fuel. So what could these propellants be? For a liquid rocket engine, especially for a launch vehicle, um, it's really common to use liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, cryogenics. They're very, very cold. That's what the space shuttle used in, in its main engines. Um, also, a lot of other launch vehicles use these two propellants. Another really common one, which is interesting, is rocket fuel, RP-1, we call it. And it's a really, really high-grade kerosene. Uh, we combine that with liquid oxygen, like with the other rockets, but we've, we're using a different fuel. And, uh, and that's really common, too. Really efficient, great way to go to space. Couple potential issues. With great possible success also comes great possible failure, right? Also true here. To start with, well, you do want an explosion ultimately, but just at the right time and in just the right place, starting with the launch pad. So if you look at the launch pad of a, of a system that's using liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen as the propellants, uh, you'll find two tanks near the launch pad, but they're opposite sides of the launch pad because you want the liquid oxygen and the liquid hydrogen to be as far away from each other as possible. You start mixing them, you get a little spark or something like that, it's bad. So we keep them separated, no explosions. In a perfect world, which it's, it's kind of a perfect world, it's, a, it's an awesome world, let's say that, uh, you would only have this, this controlled explosion inside of the engine of the spacecraft at the right time. If the oxidizer and the fuel are coming together in the right place, in the right way, and everything's, everything's humming along, great. You're, you're on your way to wherever you wanted to go. Uh, but sometimes there are issues, and you can get the hydrogen and the oxygen uh, mixing in the wrong place, and then you can have an explosion in some other part of the spacecraft or the, the rocket, uh, which is bad. An advantage to using liquid rocket engines is they are throttleable. They are the most efficient for their weight. Uh, the downsides are that they are pretty complex, but it's often worth it. The second type of rocket engine we're going to talk about is actually a rocket motor, uh, a solid rocket. A uh, solid rocket we, we refer to as motors, and they're pretty much no moving parts there. And what happens is we actually mix the oxidizer and the fuel together in the same place. We, and then we use a plasticizer and a binder to make them stick together and give it some good physical properties so it doesn't crack or do anything bad like that. And then we'll cast it in a shape inside of the rocket engine. There's a specific amount of energy in that rocket engine. You turn it on, it burns, and it gives you that amount of energy, and then it's done. A uh, great example is a solid rocket booster on the side of the space shuttle, actually. In contrast to the liquid rocket engine, the solid rocket motor, uh, once it's turned on, it can't be turned off. Well, I take that back. You can turn it off, but that's it. There's no throttling that you can do, and if you turn it off, that's it. For example, with the solid rocket boosters on the space shuttle, when it was flying, there was a, there was a plug that could be detonated and it would let all the pressure of the rocket out and it would turn it off. And that would only be in sort of a launch abort situation and that was never done. One really interesting thing about solid rocket motors, you can change the shape of what we call the grain. So the, the fuel inside of a solid rocket motor, that's the grain, and you can actually change the shape of the hole that goes down the middle to change the way it burns. 
Uh, another upside is that they are very space efficient. So they may not be quite as weight efficient as a liquid rocket engine, uh, but if you are limited on space and a solid rocket's gonna work for you, that's great. There is a third type of rocket that actually combines a lot of the, the best of the solid rockets, the best of the liquid rockets, and puts them together in the same place. And what we do is we actually will have a pressurized oxidizer, which is similar to the liquid rocket engine, um, but then we'll have a solid fuel, which is like the solid rocket motor. And what happens is you still need your, your heat or your spark, uh, but then you pump in liquid oxidizer with your solid fuel and you will get great combustion and it comes out of the engine nozzle just like with any other rocket. Um, it can be throttled, it can be turned off and on, and it's very, very safe. So it's really attractive for certain applications with uh, human space flight. Uh, an example of this would be like Spaceship One and Spaceship Two from Virgin Galactic. They're using a hybrid rocket in, in that system. And what's really interesting is actually the fuel in that case is uh, it's basically rubber. And that's what they use for their fuel. But it's efficient, it's safe, and it gets you to space. Sounds pretty good. Uh, one, one thing that's really interesting with that is you get some of the space savings from a solid rocket, but you get some of the efficiency, throttling, and on-off capability of a liquid rocket engine in the same place. Those are the three main types of rockets. There are so many more we can cover, but for another day. Uh, in the meantime, subscribe here, support us on Patreon here, share with your friends. Thanks for watching.